have a, uh, past life experiences. And you can also visit the, uh, the mythological realm of the collective unconscious, experience deities from different cultures and uh, sort of archetypal realms and so on. So uh, then my, my interest shifted in just uh, using LSD as a tool to create this new, vast uh, map of the psyche that, uh, you know, transcended what's being taught in uh, Western psychiatry and psychology and started uh, resembling the Eastern spiritual uh, philosophies, you know, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and so on. Mr. Graf, what was it like coming to these kind of conclusions under uh, the regime at that time established in uh, Czechoslovakia, which clearly didn't appreciate uh, as an ideology spirituality and this kind of views? Well, uh, I don't know how old you are, what you have experienced from this regime, mm -hmm. but when you live in that regime, you learn uh, how to deal with it, what you can say, what you cannot say. So mm -hmm. when we were doing this research uh, with psychedelics, we just presented it as chemotherapy. You see, and um, our reports about it was: uh, these were the diagnosis of the patients, these were the dosages, this was the number of the sessions, and these were the results. We didn't talk about the fact that people can have experiences that uh, very much resemble what Freud uh, had written about. And we certainly couldn't mention that people had mystical experiences. You know, that would have killed the research. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. simply, yeah, we simply uh, restricted somehow uh, the reports, you know, to something that was, uh, that was politically uh, acceptable. And uh, actually, uh, if you want, you could present this uh, as, a, as a proof of the materialistic worldview, you can say, mm -hmm. you know, here is a substance that can change consciousness and it shows the, pri uh, the, the primacy of, of matter over consciousness, which of course is not true. Uh, could you please continue? Uh, it was also interesting that you worked with USSR uh, professionals. Could you tell us something of that experience? Well, that was a very brief uh, episode. Mm -hmm. uh, my colleague and friend uh, Dietrich, and that's D Y T R. YCH and myself uh, went on an exchange uh, study uh, journey to uh, the Soviet Union. It was an exchange. You know, some of the Russians were coming to Czechoslovakia, and we went to study uh, study uh, Soviet uh, research of neurosis. And uh, at that time, we worked uh, for several weeks in the Bechterev Institute in Leningrad. And um, at that time, Czechoslovakia was the only other country besides Switzerland that produced pharmaceutically pure uh, LSD. And so we thought it would be interesting to take, uh, take some of it uh, with us uh, and introduce the, you know, the Russian colleagues to it. So we took about 300 ampules uh, with us, you know, which at, at that time was nothing illegal. I mean, LSD was just a perfectly mm -hmm. legitimate substance that was listed in the Czech pharmacopoeia, you know, together with insulin and, and uh, with, the, with the antibiotics and, uh, and uh, aspirin and so on, with indications, contraindications and so on. So there was not, you know, there was nothing, nothing sort of uh, illegal, and we took it to uh, Leningrad, and uh, I gave a talk at first in, for the for the staff, and then later I had a, actually a public talk in the in the Bechterev Institute, which you know, was very very well attended. And we basically uh, offered that we would sit for whoever wants to have a, the experience, because at that time it was seen as a as a training tool for psychiatrists that you can, you know, you can get deeper insight into the unconscious and so on. So uh, we uh, did these sessions with uh, with these uh, Soviet colleagues, and uh, actually when I gave the the, the public talk, the the head of the department. Uh, insisted that he, he had the session that day 
that he would come, it was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the, the lecture, when he was still somewhat under the influence and uh, share with the audience his personal experience as a kind of complement to my more uh, objective uh, lecture. And then, uh, you know, this was a relatively short visit, so we, we left the, uh, the rest of the ampules was the, was the staff of the Institute. Okay, you, when Czechoslovakia opened up uh, to the Western world, you also moved uh, to USA first for a visit, and then you remained there. Uh, what was your re research with psychedelics comprised most of? Um, but the situation in the States was very, very different <laughs> in that uh, uh, there was no problem uh, with Freud, of course. Freud was one of the leading psychologists. Uh, there was no problem with the spiritual dimension. You know, there's a religious freedom in the United States. But the drug became a problem because of uh, uh, what the Harvard uh, group did, uh, Leary, and, uh, mm -hmm. Albert, and... Uh, mm -hmm. And Ralph Metzner, you know, there was a scandal, and uh, then also the the mass uh, use or abuse by the young generation that got, uh, you know, very very bad publicity. And so, oh, there was also the uh, the article on the possible damage to the chromosomes and, and the influence mm -hmm. of heredity that came just just shortly before I came to the United States. And so it was the drug that was a problem. Uh, but I happened to, you know, I came to the United States to actually start a new research project at Johns Hopkins University. And because I came a week after this uh, chromosome scare appeared. Which is not uh, true, doctor, of course. Hmm? What's that? Which is not true. No, this was disproved later. Yes, yes, and, yes. Uh, mm. You know, this was a Maimon Cohen, who was a man who was... Um, basically studying the effect of various drugs on chromosomes. And he was adding aspirin and caffeine and the antibiotics and so on. And he just was describing the changes that happen in the, the chromosomes in a test tube, you know, not in the body. And he also tried uh, LSD and just published it, like he published many other reports about these substances. But because the journalists were looking for any kind of a report um, about LSD, you know, one of them discovered it, and, and there was this uh, article showing a big baby uh, uh, kind of blurred, you know, and it said, if you take LSD only once, you can have a deformed baby, and yeah, they made this jump from some changes, structural changes in the chromosomes of lymphocytes, actually, in the blood to heredity and then deformed babies and then it became a big campaign, the anti-drug campaign. And so Dr. Dr. Alkins, who invited me, didn't want to start a new project at this time, uh, but it just happened that in the same city in Baltimore was the ra last surviving official uh, psychedelic research, so I just joined that staff and uh, uh, later actually became the chief of uh, this psychiatric research center. I was, uh, you know, heading the last surviving official research. Could you tell us something also? Uh, you were very, uh, you also were interested in thanatology, and one of the very 